Hello beauties and welcome back to the Bumpy Bone Sock Sport channel. I'm really excited to be recording this video tonight because I have a medical biaxo payphone security lock that I'm going to be picking open and gutting. So let's go ahead and get started. Now these locks are a blue belt level lock in the Lock Pickers United Belt System. It's a four pin lock and it does have two mushroom pins and two standard pins in here. Now, medicals are a really fun, challenging, and also can be an exceptionally frustrating lock to pick open. So, when you are picking open a standard pin uh, tumbler lock like this Abus uh, 5540 here, pretty much all that you're trying to do is you're trying to raise the security pins above the shear line. Um, and once you get all the security pins above the shear line and you're not oversetting the key pins, the lock opens. And if we take a look at the key for my medical here, you're going to notice that we have the bidding of a regular key here. So we have uh, pins in here that we have to set to a shear line. But if I sh show you the key from the top here, what you're going to notice is that there are grooves in our uh, key here. And so the key one has a 20 degrees that goes down to the uh, right. Pin two is uh, level, it's flat. Pin three has another 20 to the right, and pin four also has another 20 to the right. And if I show you this key here, what you're going to notice is that this key has a 20 degree down to the left. And so with medicals, what you have is you have an additional security element in these locks. You have a sidebar along the side of the lock, and on your key pins, you have gates. And so not only do you have to set the pins to the shear line, but you also then have to rotate the key pins so that they, the true gates engage with the sidebar. And what makes this challenging is actually on the medical locks, there are false gates. So it's a lot like the false sets here. And just to kind of show you visually, because what I'm going to do is I am going to disassemble the lock, but I want to show you um, the uh, what's in the medicals here. And this book actually has a really good visual description of it here. So um, I want to see... All right, here we go. This is what I want to show. So these are the key pins. And so you're going to notice that you have different variations of the key pins here. And depending on the angle, which you have a variation of 20 degrees on either side, going in either direction, or you got zero degrees. And so what you want to do is the key pins are chisel point. And so you're going to have to rotate the key pin so that it aligns with the slant in the key. And what that will do is that will line up the true gate with the sidebar, and then it will allow the sidebar to open. And so here's a good representation of the sidebar uh, when it engages with the, uh, this shows I think a key it's engaging with, but when it engages with the key pins, it's pretty much similar to that. Uh, and the sidebar will fit right in those slots, and then you'll be able to open the lock. Because uh, the way that works is the sidebar is this element here, and that actually has to get depressed into the key pins in order to um, fully open the lock. But I'll show that when I gut the lock. So let's go ahead and throw this in a vise and see how long it takes me to get this open. Now, I have tried to record this video multiple times, and this is the fun thing with medical, is that it is a very, very frustrating lock. Uh, it can You can get it open in like a minute, I, my or in a few minutes. My personal best is, I think, uh, four minutes, uh, but my personal worst is over 30 minutes. So hopefully it won't take 30 minutes with this. So let's go ahead and get this in the vise here. And I'm going to be jumping between tools. I'm going to be using my top of the keyway 1.5 millimeter pry bar from all lock tools. And I'm actually going to do a couple of techniques here. So the other day I was on a live stream with W30Y Ren. And the, or W30Y Ray, sorry about that. 
And the process for picking this is you can either try to rotate the pens first and then set the shear line pen, or you can set the shear line and then try to rotate the key pens. Uh, either way can be pretty challenging. Some people have uh, an easier time doing the rotation first than the shear line. The fun with that is that when you go to set the key in the shear line, you have to be careful not to rotate the pens. Um, but if you do it the other way around, it can be challenging to set the pens. And with this lock in particular, what is challenging is not only do I have a high-low bidding, but pin 1 and pin 2 are absolutely brutal. So here's the chisel point of pin 1, and then here's the chisel point of pin 2. They are very close to one another. And pin 1, I have that 20 degree, and then pin 2 is... Flat. And so I have to rotate pin 1 without touching pin 2, and that can be brutal. Um, but let's go ahead and demonstrate um, this, going, this opening here. And Oh yeah, so going back to the technique I learned from uh, W30Y Ray. What he was saying in his live stream was rather than rotating clockwise, which in for this lock you have to open with the tension, you actually go counterclockwise and what you do is you rotate a pen and then you test it and if it's jiggly if you can raise it and lower it without any um um friction or binding and all that chances are you have the pen rotated properly but if you hit binding in that then you can release tension rotate the pen more until you can get it springy so i'm going to try that first um I'm going to be fun, and I am going to time myself here. <laughs> Again, I can't guarantee you guys how long this is going to take me, so if it does take me a while, do feel free to jump to the uh, chapter where I have it open. And let's go ahead and get started. All right, and let me actually, actually set over to my other mic here so we get the clicky noises. All right, so. All right, here we go. All right, so let's see without rotating these pins. All right, pin four is still bindy. All right, there we go. All right, pin three. Feels good. She knows. Pin two feels good. Now pin one. Rotate that one. All right, that feels good. All right, so now I'm actually going to use this so I can keep my hand out of the way. Let's see if I can get this open. All right, so I'm actually going to jump down to pin four first. Got a nice click on four. Three feels loose, two feels loose. All right, one's binding. All right, nice click on that. Choose loose. All right, three is bindy. All right, nice click on three. All right, and choose bindy. I got a nice click on two, but now why am I not getting any feedback? That's different. All right. All right, there we go. Now I'm in the false set or a false gate. So I want to try this again. Alright, so I think 
I messed something up, so we're going to go ahead and reset. And uh, so in a reset, what you do is you can either use the rake or just insert the key and that just reorients the pins back to a kind of a, a consistent pattern. All right, so let's try this again. Sometimes it's quicker to reset and try it again than try to figure it out. All right, let's see what we got with our pins. All right, pin four is a little bindy. Let me see if I can get that rotated more. All right, pin four feels good. Our pin three is bindy. All right, pin three feels good. Pin two feels good. Pin one feels good. All right, so let's try this again. I might start with pin one this time. All right, pin one set. Let's jump to four. All right, got a good click on four. Three is loose. Two is loose. I think I rotated two. Shoot. All right, one. All right, one sight. All right, two is good. All right, there's two set. All right, so, all right, that was two rotating, I mean the false set, or false gate. Summers, where's my false gate? get back to two. Let's click on two, let's get three. Ah, shoot. And just a fair warning, cursey words might come out with this one. Because these can be hard. I picked it right before this. Alright, let's reset. Lucky number three. Alright, I might try a different approach. So, I'm going to try setting things now. So there's four. Alright, one is set. Two. What's that, three? That was three. Alright, here's two. Alright. I'm back in the false gate or a false set. Which one? I think it's a false gate. Try the back pins. Is it pin one? Object, see if I can get a better rotation with this. All 
All right, so let's do Jiggo testing. Two is jiggly, three is jiggly. See, one and four are hard to tell because they're a deep pen set. And so there's not a lot of room. And what I'm learning with the medicals is you gotta be really comfortable with your pick. feeling better. Let's see what happens. Haha! <laughs> Okay, so these are a pain in the butt. So we finally got that open. Yay! So now let's gut it. Now I am going to admit this is like my eighth time attempting this video. The past times I actually took this off frame and I want to use this as my blue belt submission for my lock pickers. United belt system so I'm being really careful not to take this off of frame so in the gutting what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove the key pens first via the grub screws and then I'll remove the cylinder and all that I'm not going to fully disassemble the lock because this is a bit of a pain to get back on um, but this is a really cool lock so let's go ahead and get our pinning tray and let's get our grub screws off And penny tweezers. Oh, and the pick that I used, by the way, primarily was my uh, Sparrows medium hook, uh, Monkey Paw. This is the 0 .015. I found using the thin pick was very, uh, it was easier because I was able to rotate the pens and um or get to either side of the pen to rotate but you want to be careful you don't want to use too deep of a hook with this i think um because i think what was happening i'm going to go back and rewatch my video but i think i accidentally grabbed my deep hook and um i think that's what was causing a lot of the problems um i last one i know i used the medium hook here um and i think that may have been my problem initially so let's go ahead and get our pens out so pin one here is, we got the mushroom pin. And what you're going to notice with the key pins, the key pins are a little special as well when it comes to medical. Because they can get very funky very fast. So if you overset a pen, that can be a uh, potential problem. All right, so let's get this out. So pin 2 has our standard pin, and let's get pin 3 here. I love locks that have grub screws because it makes it 
really easy. And the way that I learned medical was actually using this. This is the lock that I would actually really encourage people to use uh, as your first medical learning lock because um, I cut away some of the mounting here in order to easily access the uh, grub screws because I wanted to keep the locking mechanisms intact. I, lo I love that you, you can see everything with this. Um, but the way that I did this was I did progressive pinning. So I started with pin 1 and worked my way to pin 4. Had a hard time with pin 4, so then I actually reversed it. I started with pin 4 and ended like a 4, 3, 4, 3, 2, 4, 3, 2, 1. And I eventually got it, so I'm really excited on that. Okay, in my opinion, this is another milestone lock because they are a very challenging lock. You can get them open quickly, but then when they want to put up a fight, you got a huge fight. All right, so here's our last pen. All right, so before I remove the cylinder, let's check out these pens. And pen four here is our mushroom pen. So what we got here, and I'm going to change my focus here real quick. So we can see we got uh, you know our standard mushroom pens, and in our standard pens we actually have two widths or two lengths and all that, and that actually does come back a little bit with the feedback. So this would actually kind of feel like a stronger spring than this would. Uh, but if you look at the key pens, you'll see, and I'm hoping this comes across in the video, but you'll see, ooh, I don't want to lose this because I don't have any replacements. You'll see that the pens are chisel point. They also have serrations on them, some really good serrations. But you'll notice right there is the gate that um, I've been talking about. And so that's what's got to line up with the um, the the gate in the sidebar in the lock. So let's actually take a look at that. I'm trying to see if there's one here that's got a false gate, and I'm not seeing uh, one that's got like a heavy false gate on it. So um, let's go ahead and put that there, and let's get the cylinder out here. So I haven't done that before with this lock and oh come on this is tight well I want to be careful because I don't want to strip that ah shoot I'm stripping it I don't know if I'll be able to get this off. <sighs> All right, I need my vice. stripped all right well um damn i was hoping i would be able to get that out i'm not going to be able to get that out mm. let me
Oh. Alright, well, I was hoping to get this out and use this as a blue belt level uh, submission, but I don't know if they're going to count me just removing the pins, because I think you really want to see the sidebar with it. So, what we'll do is, um, I guess I'm going to have to leave that like that, so uh, there's really not much I can do with that. That's too bad. But I still love this lock. This is a really cool lock. So, well... You never quite know what's going to happen when you go through and you do uh, these um, videos and all of that. So I hope everybody enjoyed the video. Um, you know, do feel free to like and comment and subscribe to my channel. I am going to do some more medical locks hopefully in the future. I've got another payphone lock here that I've got. I can't really easily disassemble this one because it has a plate rather than the... Um, um, grub screws but i might do a video with this one eventually i got these more for like a collector or, you know have on the shelf type deal but the next one i'm going to go with is i got this medical original here and this is a six pin lock so i got two more pins on this um and i'm going to work my way up to the medical m3 and the big differences between the medical original and the medical M3 is that the uh, biaxle and the original have, I think, what's called a passive sidebar. And so that's when you rotate the key pins, the sidebar automatically engages when you're turning the key. With the medical M3, however, you actually have an active sidebar. So that means there is a, and I'm going to see if I can get this in on the, yeah, you can kind of see it right in the lower right-hand corner there. You see that little button there, that little, uh, yeah, I would say button or lever. Uh, that's the sidebar in the lock. And that would, on this one, what you actually have to do is after you get all the gates set, you then have to push that bar in order to engage the sidebar into the gates. And so there's another mechanism on this one here. This, these are hard. Uh, and then once I get that done, I have a key mark here with a crazy keyway um, that I am going to work on. This is a 7-pin lock. So I've got um, a couple of 6 pins, and now I'm going to go for a 7th pin and all that. So, well, again, I hope everybody enjoyed this video. Do feel free to like and comment and subscribe to my channel. And as always, I hope everyone has a beautiful day, and I will see you all later.